2020 has turned all our lives upside down. It's brought terrible suffering and loss, but it's reminded us what matters most, the health and safety of the people around us. It's also shown us what we risk when we upset the delicate balance between people and planet. And we cannot afford to simply go back to the way things were before the pandemic. That's why WHO has published a manifesto with six steps to take to ensure a healthy and green recovery from COVID-19. One, to cherish and protect the source of all human health, the natural world. Two, to invest in vital life-saving services like access to water and sanitation and clean energy in healthcare facilities. Three, to quickly transition to clean, renewable sources of energy. Four, to switch to healthy and sustainable food systems. Five, to make all our towns and cities green and healthy. And six, to shift from an economy driven by profit and pollution to an economy driven by fairness and well-being. We know what we need to do. We have the tools to do it. Let's work together now to create a healthier and greener world. Welcome to this assembly on health security, which is based on a health security workshop of a festival in October 2020, marking the 75th birthday of the United Nations. The UN, as you probably know, brings together the countries of the world to try to solve global problems. The festival workshop was organised by a group of volunteers who want to help the UN make the world a better place. We brought together health professionals and activists of a wide range of ages and from all over the world to look at health security and what we have learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the video and audio quality is not perfect, as people were contributing from all over the world and with different technical capabilities, but we hope that you will be able to hear what is being said and appreciate having such a wide-ranging group of experts. This assembly builds on the video that you have just seen, which was produced by the World Health Organization, the UN agency bringing experts and governments together to address health issues around the world. The workshop was chaired by former government health advisor, Dame Sally Davies, whom you will see now. We have a choice to make. Will we simply respond to the here and now, or do we take a moment to stop, look up, and see beyond the horizon of this pandemic towards the next one? Because, you know, it will be an next one. COVID-19 is neither the first nor the last health emergency we're going to face. Scientists estimate that we will face a health emergency at least once every five years from here on. And there's a chance this is an optimistic scenario. The reality could be far worse. Less us pray that as they come, they are more contained than COVID-19 is. But, recognising this, we can and must say never again and take action. The panellists agreed that people are the solution, working from the bottom up in their communities, creating local initiatives, agreeing priorities and ensuring that what they do is sustainable. Now the video will be paused so that you can discuss in small groups with two or three neighbours how you think people can be the solution. What can each of us do to create a healthier world? Here are some of the ideas that you might have come up with. Eat healthily. We need to know what this means, so it is important that we have learned about balanced diets, avoiding too much sugar and salt, and the effects of our diets on the environment. Behave healthily. This could include taking regular exercise, getting enough sleep, being hygienic, such as washing hands regularly, wearing a face mask and keeping distant when an infection is around, not smoking or drinking alcohol. Mental health ideas. Empowering communities, like your school, to support each other, talking and listening, to relieve mental stress. Learn from other communities, both in this country and around the world. 
Here are some of what was said about these at the conference. First about strengthening communities to give them the necessary skills, and then a community health support idea from Zimbabwe. We need to empower uh, communities, we need to empower and capacitate local actors to have the skills, the knowledge uh, to respond to problems in their own areas, in their own countries, in their own communities. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with the friendship bench in that, you know, it's, it's the use of a physical bench that is placed in the communities um, and where individuals, you know, access it and so are provided support through community lay health workers or grandmothers, excuse me, as we like to commonly um, refer to them as, which enables one to use the bench as a, creating a safe space to really articulate and, and address the challenges that they're having, you know, if it's, if it's to do with suicide or depression or anxiety or stress. We're also, because of the COVID-19 impact in terms of people's uh, being accessing the friendship bench through face-to-face, -face, we've now utilized the use of the digital platforms so, you know, we have opened up um, entities or information services like a WhatsApp group, as well as a, we have the Inuka platform, which is a digital platform where people can utilize, you know, in terms of just wanting to share and, and talk about the issues that they're challenged with. The festival wanted to encourage action at all levels, individuals, communities, nations, international organizations like the United Nations actions that needed to be taken to build a more secure world. On the festival website, you can see the actions and decide which ones you can help with. Now hear Ginny Arnold from the WHO describing the support for this that you can find on the WHO website. And then some selections from Dr. Ibiye Adoki summarizing some of the main actions. We will then return to Dame Sally Davies for her final points. And if um, panelists or the audience want to go to the WHO <laughs> website, there are fantastic resources on the COVID-19 page on topics around school opening, school closure, um, topics that are particularly focused for the interests of the general public, how to stay healthy at home during COVID, how to ensure um, that you are supporting your community and your family during COVID. There's a lot of fantastic resources and all of the resources on the WHO website have of course been informed by best practices and by um, global research. Main action points. Um, on an individual level, we discussed the importance of um, really promoting partnerships between individuals and imaginative partnerships and trying to promote open discussions between um, various individuals. We moved on to the community level and recognised that it, it promotes the flexibility to adapt to local need, which is quite unique to the community level of action. We found a lot of examples such as bike lanes and discussed the positive effect that just placing a bike lane in the context of the pandemic has had on certain communities and um, encouraging exercise. And we talked about free school meals and healthy behaviours to, to various different groups through initiatives like free school meals. Um, we then looked at the national level. We also talked about the dangers of targeted marketing when talking about healthy behaviours, things like advertising unhealthy um, foods to, to certain individuals and trying to avoid that on a national level. Mm. And then finally, internationally, we've talked about the, the benefits that can be had from learning from others. So the benefits of shared knowledge between countries. Um, often that can be forgotten in, we talked about medical education and how traditionally that focuses only on Western medical education that talks about the benefits of learning from others on an international scale and the exchange of good practices between countries and setting standards like minimum safety standards for, for healthcare practices as well. So we've discussed today a number of issues. We've talked about the pandemic and our responses across the world, about non-communicable diseases, about digital health, and digital technologies to improve health, universal health coverage, mental health, maternal and adolescent health care. And the message 
to the UN and the WHO rings true across all these things. Through your normative work and guidance, you can make a big difference. But also, you work with the politicians and the policy makers on behalf of all of us. You need to help them understand the priorities of the public, help them to understand that they need to engage their communities and their NGOs, and help them to bring together their data effectively for best responses. Health is one of the primary assets, not only of people and families, but of nations. It leads to economic productivity. So more investment so that we do have the capacity, the infrastructure, and the capability to make health a reality for all our people. We'll have peace here.